see you. Thanks for having me on. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on. And congratulations. Uh, the film is superb. Oh, good. You saw it and liked it. I really loved it. I go to Sweeney's quite a lot, and it was packed, and yeah. everyone loved it. Oh, it's they good. Really well, it's a, it makes it, you know, you don't always... Um, love the things you're in, if you're really honest. But it's lovely. It's easy to sell stuff that you really have faith in. I think it's. Uh, I really love the film. Sort of film that I like to go and see anyway. It's sort of you know, it's a psychological thriller adapted, as you say, from uh, Daphne Du Maurier's book, uh, My Cousin Rachel. A great story, though. Great as well. story. Yeah. I mean, the book is like very thin. It's like a, a, a pamphlet and. It, Adapted by Roger Michel, directed uh, it, and um, he did Notting Hill, of course. He did, yeah, yeah. So and different. He's, you know, <laughs> I, it's so different. And actors love working with him. I mean, he's done lots at the National, done theatre. We've had sort of near misses a couple of times. I've always wanted to work with him, and then he, you know, this is the first time he said, you know, would you play this part? And I read the screenplay, I read the book, and I thought it was great, and uh, and was really happy to be on board. You know, I'd worked with Rachel Weisz about oh go. 15, 20 years ago in okay. a, <clears throat> a comedy in Glasgow called Beautiful Creatures. Oh, yeah, of course. I played a psychotic heroin addict. Um, <laughs> and uh, we had fun on that, so it was nice to cross paths. Well, what, what I love about the, the, the direction, if you like, is there are some extreme close-ups. But yes. you really get the emotion. Uh, the there's a servant there. I was talking to you before we came on air. Mm. There's a servant uh, who manages, I don't know how he does it, but he has this dew drop <laughs> hanging off his nose <laughs> for, for the first three scenes. And no. it just lies there. It's really just either. incredible. First year at Rada. How yeah. do you keep How it hanging you? there? How do you, yeah. <laughs> you spend a week but on that sort I of know, stuff. Uh, so the story is basically about Philip, who inherits his guardian's estate in that's Cornwall. Right. He then falls for his cousin, Rachel, and that's when uh, the trouble starts. Yeah. And, I mean, and you try and keep him on the straight and narrow, don't you? I do. I mean, it's sort of about everyone's world being turned upside down by this gorgeous, exotic, beautiful creature who enters this sort of sleepy Cornwall community. And... Um, Yes, the story is really about is she benign or is she sinister, and yeah. throughout the entire movie, it never you ne that never really gets resolved, no. and that's that was Du Maurier's uh, intention, and so I think yeah, and that's part of the extreme close-up is all the time you're just looking for clues all the time. Uh, uh, is this for real? Isn't it for real? Why are they behaving this way? Uh, Rachel is stunning in it. I mean, she's so gorgeous, and you have to carry the audience with you all the time. As a, uh, as an audience member, I think you think. Oh, you know, I've sort of fallen in love with her now. I, oh, no, I don't I'm like that. Sure. I completely distrust her. And so, and, and Sam is great. It's a very different sort of role for him. Um, and, uh, and he's brilliant in it as well. The, the story lies there in their relationship. And I play a kind of, I don't know, it's like um, almost like a Greek chorus. I follow the audience's take on it uh, mm -hmm. and want what's best for him. I've been his legal guardian, and in his passion and his adoration of this girl, he wants to give everything over to her. So he wants to, his entire estate, all his money, all the jewelry, give. It's just all gone, you know. Just <laughs> you say, say that a lot. No, yes, uh, I do. I do say that a lot. We, we've got a clip, actually. Let's oh, have a look. Okay. I've been doing a little asking around. Did you know that the duel in which her first husband died was fought over one of her lovers? Well, I don't believe that. They were notorious. Both him and her, for unbridled extravagance, and apparently limitless appetite. Do you understand? Do you? Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, wh where did you film it? We were sort of, it was various locations around London. That, that, the, the primary one was, you remember Bamba, Bamba Gascoigne? Yeah. Who, yeah. And it was an estate I think he inherited and, uh, and has found it difficult to kind of uh, support. It's massive. And so uh, they were very happy to have us. As, and it fitted our story Gosh. because it's slightly gone to seed yeah. uh, a little bit. And he was present, a sweet man. So, yeah, it was the, primarily there, different locations. What, he was checking that you didn't steal anything? Exactly, or, yeah. Or asking anything. Us quiz questions and stuff. But, um, yeah, and then in and around Cornwall, different, different places. Gosh. But, yeah, all over. And nice for you to be talking about something that isn't Game of Thrones. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it, it is. Listen, I would... Uh, I would never wish it away. It's been one of the happiest chapters, really, in, uh, in my career. Um, none of us knew it was going to turn into what it did. Uh, and it's just, you know, year by year, the audience figures, the global appeal sort of gone up. And, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those where, you, you know, it doesn't matter what airport you land in, you're going to get uh, recognition. And, but people are very sweet. And it's that, that holy grail of something which is 
commercially incredibly popular but critically approved of and that's that's lovely that's what you you know you hope for in a and the new series starts uh, July the 17th, I think. Like right 17th, that. yeah, yeah. They sort of, <coughs> they open it now at the same day worldwide because fans used to get very upset if it showed in America first and then they would give away storylines and stuff. So, yeah, okay. it's, uh, it's imminent. Um, and they've done what they did on Mad Men, I think, in Sopranos, where they take the last season and divided it into two. And so there's 15 hours, I think, of, of screen time left. We've shot the first... Uh, no, 13 hours. So we shot the first seven, and that's about to show. That's, you know, mid July. Yeah. And then the six hours to follow uh, if you're alive and if you're in it. <laughs> um, you'll be alive and you'll be in it. Oh, Come I on. See. But uh, I, I, honestly, when I read these scripts for this season, I thought they were the best that Dan and David had written. They were brilliant. And there was no sense of treading water. They were just catapulting forward to the, towards the end game. Um, and I think that, you know, it's bigger and better. And there are more surprises. Um, yeah, I think I think the fans are going to love it. Obviously. Absolutely brilliant! Uh, amazing that you're doing this because you know, your background, your mum and dad aren't performers at all. They both They're had normal all, jobs. No. But your, your older brother's a director as well. He is, yeah, commentary theatre, Belgrade. Yeah. And even at school, because I know that uh, school wasn't a particularly happy time for you. Yeah, the, the, no, not the very Victorian Edinburgh Academy at the yes, time. At the time, at the time, yeah. I mean, I got in trouble a little bit by by talking about it, and of course, it's transformed itself and is a very different sort of. Uh, establishment now but at the time yeah it was it was it was like the last vestiges of an old style victorian uh, education yeah, i was saying you had nicky campbell on yeah the, i mean he you're a good mate yeah 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 well i mean we sort of we we lost touch a bit but um yeah we were very good mates back at school and used to get up to terror yeah, I've heard, I've heard some, pre uh, some pretty awful tales. Don't a couple from him, actually. Is yeah. it true that you used to lie under leaves, completely still, and then somebody walked past and you'd jump up and frighten them? Yes, yes. They, always, uh, they were all about trying to terrorise just members of the public. And uh, I, outside my house, there was, in, in the autumn, the leaves used to gather in the gutter. And I was the one who used to lie in there, and I would just leave a hand. <laughs> just a hand, that's all you could see about the gutter. And then it was an L-shaped road, and Nicky would stand at one end when he could see someone coming. So with time, that we would arrive Brilliant. at this, this uh, hand and go, oh, my God, to, to some poor person who would go, right, and say, Nicky, you've you, you got to wait, phone the police to find where's the nearest telephone box. <laughs> this poor person would, you know, oh, oh, no, and off they would go, and then I would stand and go, no, 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 It was pathetic. <laughs> so they all had that kind of... Uh, uh, elements, yes, we used to do things. How fantastic! And, and, and I, I hear a tale, and I'm not saying if this was from Nicky or, or not, but yes. that also at the moment you're uh, teaching your children swear words and <laughs> when to use them. <laughs> you um, should be a very proud that's parent. That's true. <laughs> I, you know, because I knew I couldn't do it on camera. I actually played one of the uh, your, your assistants. Uh, I, it's on my phone of me teaching my three-year-old uh, swear words. <laughs> I, there's just something inherently very funny about <laughs> young people saying rude words. I just <laughs> It kills me, and so I've got all my children um, still on my phone uh, with all the kind of primary swear words. The primary ones, yeah, okay. just the primary yeah. ones. Well, congratulations on the film. I, I absolutely loved it, and I'm so pleased you're here today. Uh, oh, just to hear all the stories, thank great. You. Uh, after the break, one of Britain's greatest singers, the one and only Elkie Brooks. I've met quite a few eccentric, um, wonderful people on the show over the years, but no one who paints monkey nuts. Yes. I'm probably the first. <laughs> so we've got a fantastic one of Robin Williams. <laughs> oh my God! How, how long would something like that take to make? Uh, Robin was probably about ten hours. He, he's actually the one I like him the best. Like I think it was the most successful likeness I've ever done. So you're working on the cast of Game of Thrones at the moment, aren't you? Yes. Uh, originally, I was commissioned by MTV to make them, and what they did is. Uh, when they did recaps every week on the episodes, they would use my peanuts as puppets for a little puppet show. Uh, you've done one for Ian and myself. Yes, I have. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> How long did I take? Uh, I would say mm, eight hours. Uh, Steve, absolutely fantastic work. So